Hello everybody, thanks for tuning back into another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and uplifted our application to abide by the MVVM architecture that Google has been pushing for. Coupling the architecture with Kotlin coroutines and retrofit, we have what I would like to call a state-of-the-art application performing network requests. Let's continue building this out. We ended the last episode explaining that we no longer handle network failures like we used to. And that's because we've gone ahead and shifted our Rick and Morty service to go ahead and return a response object instead of a call, which we would then NQ and call back on and we would have callbacks for successes and failures. Since we've changed this to a response so that it works nicely with Kotlin coroutines, we need to handle this ourselves. So we can go ahead and create a little bit of a helper function that exists inside of our API client class so that this logic will apply to all of our network requests that we make in the future and we can go ahead and create a data class to encapsulate the success or failure of a particular network request inside of our project. So I'll go ahead by very easily creating what will be a data class. We're just going to call it a simple response here. Change this to data class. We're going to add a parameterized type here and then we are going to go ahead and put some information inside of the constructor. So we will put a status, which will be of type status that we will create in a second. The data itself, which will be a retrofit to response of type T as well. I think this should be nullable so that we can handle the network failure cases. And then in case of that, when we have failed, we're going to go ahead and have an exception here, which will also be nullable because in the success case, we won't have an exception. We can get rid of this annoying little error here by creating a sealed class called status with some objects inside of here. Success and failure that both extend status. What you can kind of think of this as is an enum. Enums do exist in Kotlin. However, sealed classes is something that is new to Kotlin. At least when I left Java, they didn't have that built out. But we basically can create something that mimics an enum, but we don't have to run into cases where when we want to switch on the particular enum, we don't need to be exhaustive and just a little bit of new wave Kotlin features that we can make use of. There are some other advantages, but I don't want to dive too deep into it to take the focus away from what we're doing. And I've gone ahead here and defined a few variables that we can make use of when we are accessing this class. So first we can check if the response has failed and we will do so by checking the failure status or checking the status and seeing if it equals failure. We can check if this network request was successful by determining that it has not failed and the data is successful. Remember the data is a retrofit response which we're making use of this is successful boolean elsewhere. So we're compounding this logic here with the fact that the network request has not failed to truly determine if the response we got from the network was successful. And then here our body which is of type T whatever parameterized type we make use of this class with and we just simply fetch the data, which is the response, and then fetch its body, uh, of course, asserting non-null along the way. Final thing we need to do here is set up our companion object so that we can very easily build these objects where we need to. And so we can very easily create the success and failure methods here that we can invoke passing in simply the information that we need. So for instance, in the success route, we will just pass in the successful response we get from the network, and we can go ahead and build this simple response. We already know the status. We know the exception in this case is null, and then we go ahead and set the data. And then in the failure case, we basically pass in the exception, and we do the opposite where we set the data to null, the status to failure, and the exception as the exception passed in. So now we have a simple response here that we can go ahead and make use of. Bouncing back to our API client, we're going to go ahead and create an inline function here. So here we go and define a parameterized function called safe API call that will go ahead and accept basically a function pointer to something that will return a response of type T. And then we will go ahead and return a simple response of that same type. And the real kicker comes in right now where we're going to go ahead and return something from a try catch block. And so this is where we can get around the issue of not handling the network request successfully. So here we are going to invoke our API call. So remember this is basically where the network request is going to happen. And we are gonna go ahead and stuff the response that this API call is going to return inside of our success block here, our success companion object function on the simple response 
but if this fails at all in any point and when a network request would fail, this is where it would fail. We've gone ahead and wrapped this in a try catch. And by doing so, the catch block will get invoked if our network request has failed. And we will simply go ahead and now invoke the failure companion object function, passing in the exception at that moment. Now we can, inside of our API client, do something that looks like this, where we will call the safe API call inline function. And then we will go ahead and basically do what we were doing before, access our API this way. And then instead of response here, we are going to have to return a simple response because that is of course what gets returned here. So inside of the API client, this is why we have this little layer of redundancy around the uh, Rick and Morty service here. Nothing here changes. We're still going to follow this pattern of having each function declaration inside of this interface be a suspend function that returns a response of whatever type we are trying to parse from the network. But then inside of our API client here, this is where we're gonna take care of basically wrapping every single API call that we make inside of a try catch to ensure that we handle successes and failures appropriately. And now we can make use of this inline function here. So we've completed or we've uplifted this part of our application. However, we need to go ahead and update this part as well. So inside of our repository class here, we now have a request that is no longer of type response, instead it is the simple response. So we can just add another simple check in here and say if the request has failed, then we're gonna go ahead and return null. I'm gonna flip this around as well to just make things a little easier and say if the request is not successful, we will also return null. And then otherwise, we are going to return the request.body here. So not too much has changed here, but I do want to cover it. We still make an API call here, except now we're making an API call in a little bit of a safer approach, where if the API call fails, if the network fails, if the user loses internet, if some hiccup happens for an unknown reason, we will not crash the app. Instead, we will go ahead and return basically a failed status on the request. So then we can go ahead and check that failed status here. And in this case, we're just going to return null for now. Then we can also go ahead and check to see if the request is successful. And so this doesn't have anything to do with if the request actually made it to the Rick and Morty service or not. This has to do with the fact that when it made it to the server, were we authorized? Was it a 200? Was it a, an okay request that came back? Or did we run into some other issue? So this is out of our control network issues. This is checking for if you know the request was actually successful, if we were able to fetch the data appropriately. And then if we didn't, obviously we're just gonna return null. We're not really handling an error case. But then the base case here is that we just go ahead and return the body, because at this point, we've gone ahead and verified that the request has not failed and that the request was successful, meaning we do have data so we can bubble up the response to the other calling sites of this code. If you watched the last episode where we transformed our application to follow the MVVM architecture, you may have left wondering exactly why or, or what some benefits of this pattern are other than following what someone else told us. Well, here is one solid example. We went ahead and created a whole new response object that basically uh, wraps the retrofit response and so now we have a, an appropriate way to handle failures. We went ahead and uplifted our API client here and made some changes to how we go ahead and create API calls and then we went in here to the repository layer and we had to update our implementation. But the beauty of this is that the way MVVM works, if you remember this little diagram here, is that the view layer interacts with the view model, the view model interacts with the repository, and the repository is responsible for getting the data. Well, because all we had to do was change a little bit of a function inside of the repository, the view model was unaffected and the view layer, the activity or the fragment was also unaffected. So we were able to make changes to our repository layer, to our little networking layer here without affecting the rest of our code. Now I know this might not have been the best example as to why that was brilliant or why that was so helpful, but instead of one function in here for an API call, imagine there are a hundred API calls in here and now we had to go through and update all of them, well, that would mean that we would have 100 plus other locations inside of our activities, our fragments, elsewhere in the code that we would also need to update. However, when we follow this pattern, 
we just need to update the repository layer because at the end of the day, this function's responsibility was to return a character by ID response, of course, nullable because we are not handling all of the different edge cases at this very moment. But by going ahead and uplifting a little bit of logic in here, we were able to do that. So we did not need to change the return type here. We did not need to change any of the code that's upstream from here. You'll notice there's no errors here. There's no redness in our IDE. And then if we go all the way up to our activity layer, all of this stuff has been unaffected. We haven't made any changes. You can see up here simply what has changed in our little Git, what, what colors have changed on our file names. And it's very simply just the repository, the client, and of course we created this new file here. So another benefit here of the MVVM is again, going back to that separation of concerns and by properly separating different layers inside of our application, we were able to change something pretty quickly that has potentially very large repercussions on the stability, on the bulletproofness of our application without having to modify all that much code and really not many layers. So if we go ahead and just rerun this application again, we will see that it is now installing, the application's coming to the foreground, and everything works like it used to. So really just driving home the point of separation of concerns, why it's so powerful, how this MVVM architecture should be used, and just how simple it is to make some large scale changes, even though this one was very simple and very trivial, you could you know, imagine how this could remain a simple update because of this architectural pattern. So we've really made quite a foundational change here to our network layer, which is going to set us up very nicely for all of the network requests that we're going to have to make in the near future. And in the next episode here, we will just continue our development of this application. And I have something in mind here to uplift the layout of this screen here a little bit to make it a bit more dynamic and set the precedent for what we're going to use for how we're going to be building the rest of our UIs for this application. I hope to see you there. Thanks.